We're joined now by Clarity Capital co-president Lauren Schreiber from the investment firm's New York office. Mr. Schreiber, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Benjamin. So what exactly is the impact of the current Gaza hostilities on the world market? Well, that's a very interesting question. Uh, as we look at the global media, it's clear that the Gaza situation, the fighting between Hamas and Israel, has really taken over all you know, current news events. We're seeing it in every headline around the world, both in print and in, in uh, online media. Right. Interestingly, the financial markets have taken a completely different perspective. It really, as we look at the impact that it's had, has, has really been almost a, a minimal impact, if any. Uh, we've seen the U.S. markets, equity markets, have uh, are staying within about one or two percent mm -hmm. of their all-time highs over right. the last week or two. Right. When we look at European markets, uh, they're within one or two percent of their highs over the last five years, although they haven't actually gotten back to their pre-2008 uh, crisis levels. Uh, gold, which tends to be a very strong barometer, indicating anxiety and fear in markets. Right. Like flee to gold, so uh, speak, flight, yeah. uh, flight to a quality asset of some sure. kind. Um, we saw gold prices actually spike right mm. around the beginning of the conflict, mm. but I think that was because it happened to coincide with the shooting down of the Malaysian jetliner right. over Ukraine right. by Russian right. separatists. Right. And I think there was much more of a fear of a, a Russian reaction and what would happen with Russia and other countries at the time, uh, rather than what was going on in Gaza. And we've seen gold prices actually come back down since that happened. Wow. Okay. Is there a specific Wall Street uh, perspective on this? Well, it's interesting. I, I think that what financial advisors, fin people who are active in the financial markets, mm -hmm. tend to take a much more rational view mm -hmm. than the kind of day-to-day -day news and the day-to-day -day emotional response that we get to what happens at a human level. Yeah. So yeah. as you mentioned, I'm co-president of a global financial services firm. Sure, sure. Our job is to actually look through all the noise yes. and find the yes. facts that are relevant for our clients. And what we're seeing by the difference between the way the financial markets are reacting mm -hmm. and the way that the general media is, is reacting uh, seems to be the difference between trying to see the facts of what could have a global impact and dealing with the more you know detailed human story. Right. The, 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 Sorry. Why exactly is the impact so limited? I mean, if you were to compare the Israel Gaza story to, say, the Ukraine Russia story, like, what are the main differences from the financial perspective? Right. Well, so I think, again, as I said, it's important to look at the facts. So, uh, as you know, uh, when that first rocket landed about a mile away from Ben Gurion Airport, right. the US FAA made a decision to temporarily shut down flights from mm -hmm. the US to Israel. Mm -hmm. Uh, the CAA in Israel, the Civil Aviation Authority, yeah. actually provided some good statistics to the FAA in response to that. And some of the numbers are, are very remarkable. And okay, I think it's, it's kind of the way that financial markets look at things. Yeah. The, they calculated that the probability of an aircraft sitting on the tarmac at Ben Gurion mm -hmm. being hit by a rocket was 1 in 100 million. And the probability of an aircraft in the air, either arriving from uh, yeah. arriving to Ben Gurion or leaving Ben Gurion, was approximately one in a billion. Okay. So when the FAA saw those types of numbers, they realized that there are many other you know impacts on commercial transport right. that are much more significant than that. But let's relate it directly now to Ukraine and Russia. Why uh, is that so different? Uh, well, I think that uh, Russia being a global trade counterpart for so many people mm -hmm. and it's having such a direct impact on oil supply right. around the world, right. uh, in addition to having their own you know, significant military and trade relationships around the world, uh, has the potential to draw in a China or a U.S. in a much more significant way than likely the situation in Gaza would, right. would whatever. Uh, I mean, certainly the, the the economy, obviously in the Ukraine, is much more connected, so to speak, to the rest of the of the world than Gaza is at this point. Right. Ukraine is actually a very very small piece of the Russian economy, but pulling Russia into a conflict with that potentially will Mix, put it at right. odds with other global superpowers uh, could certainly have a much bigger impact. Okay, and, and well, relative to Israel then, I mean, like, pulling Israel, Israel also is, is certainly uh, connected to, uh, worldwide to different markets. Doesn't, why doesn't that have the same effect? Well, I think it comes back to the idea of, you know, looking at what's rational versus what's emotional. Yeah. And uh, interestingly, the Pew Research Foundation in the U.S. just issued a study that showed, uh, at least for U.S. people, mm -hmm. the, there's a very, very high correlation between the level of education that individuals have and their knowledge of current events, 
uh, connected to their support for Israel. Yeah. So people who have more levels, more, more years of education, either at the high school or university level, tend to be more supportive of the state of Israel. And people who are either less educated or less knowledgeable tend to have less support overall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, I think it's the same idea. Once you know the facts, you tend to respond in a more rational way. And I think that's what we're seeing in financial markets. You know, we, we're a firm that's based both in New York and in Israel. Yeah. And we see the strength of Israel. We don't see this conflict as something that will be long lasting or have a significant impact. What would have to happen in Gaza for it to have an impact? Or is, I mean, is that a fair question to you? It's a very great question, I think. I think it's important to put things in perspective. When we look at what's going on in Gaza, even if it were to escalate from here somewhat, mm -hmm. Uh, it just pales in comparison to what's sure. happening between the ongoing civil war in Syria, the uh, uh, emerging mm -hmm. uh, crisis of ISIS moving through uh, parts sure. of the Middle East, uh, even the, the ongoing threat of uh, potentially a nuclear Iran. Right. And as you right. said, Russia becoming more at odds with its uh, counterparts because of the Ukraine. All of those things are so much larger than anything that could really come out of Gaza in terms of a global perspective, mm -hmm. not an individual human perspective, but mm -hmm. a global view, that it's just hard to imagine a scenario where Israel is really at threat, a threat or it really has a significant impact. We, okay. we, we see this as a temporary situation and it will get resolved. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, in looking at, uh, at, at different um, geopolitical conflicts and, and other financial shocks that have happened uh, over the past, say, 70, 80 years, um, um, different studies have shown that um, even though there's an initial impact over time, um, the impact tends to lessen and the financial markets tend to just sort of, you know, get back on their feet, so to speak. Um, isn't the Israeli case just another example? Uh, I think it is. As I said, we don't even see much of a, of a downtrend uh, in, in process, but certainly to whatever extent there was, we think it'll be a temporary blip and uh, things will continue and we'll get back to normal. Okay, well, Lawrence Schreiber, co-president of Clarity Capital, thanks for joining us. Thanks for uh, giving us more insight into the situation here with Israel and Gaza as relates to the global financial markets. And uh, we hope to have you here again. Thank you my very pleasure, much. Benjamin. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that takes it to the end of this very magazine today. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for watching. Join us on Twitter, watch us online, and send us your feedback, please. Thank you.